Hey everyone, Alexi Talanda here, and welcome to our bonus content as we work on putting Ostium Season 6 together. We're continuing with our Behind the Ostium series as we go in-depth with the making and discussion of how each episode of Ostium came to be, as well as much more. I am joined by Dwayne Farver, a big fan of the show and creator of the spin-off podcast, Manifestations. If you enjoy the Behind the Ostium series, you can get full access to over 50 episodes right now by supporting Team Ostium on Patreon at patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. You'll also get access to a bunch of other bonus content on there too. Once again, that's patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. We'll continue working on getting Ostium Season 6 ready for release in 2022, but for now, sit back and enjoy another episode of Behind the Ostium. All right, on to episode 12, Cultum Ostium, where Jake and Monica find the Skull Cult, which Jake knows all about. <laughs> um, I This was the first episode where we have um, kind of POV shifts with each of the characters where you start to have Jake doing his recording and Monica doing her recording. Part of the reason I did this was um, it was tricky to get the actors working, you know, to record all together was much harder to do. So it made it easier to have them start doing their separate things so that it was, it made it more feel more seamless and more fluid in the, the dynamics of the show. And I couldn't always get the, the two actors to be recording together. So that was part of the reason I did that, but I think it also felt right that while they just in the previous episode made this agreement to be um, tell the truth to each other and all this stuff, it would immediately start diverting. And in so doing that, they kind of needed to start to have their own tangents of the story of Ostium and having them do their separate recordings facilitated that and made it um, more of a useful tool than for later on um, having them develop their their what they're you know for them follow up for their reasons for what they were doing and their secrets they were keeping and their plans and stuff like that it made it all work out um, a lot better i think the storyline for this episode came from my interest in anthropology uh i found an article about a turkish skull cult which sounded kind of cool from i can't remember how what dates it was like thousands of years ago obviously um where they'd found this hidden room and there were skulls there and stuff like that. Um, but then all the details about going through that tunnel and then going into an act, this really small one that Jake kind of uses a kind of almost like weird supernatural power to shrink himself to get through there um, was from another article about a South African um, archaeological dig site where they'd found, I think, bones along the way on this tunnel. And then there was this actual smaller tunnel leading to something. And they had to actually like search out around the world for new um, interns that were specifically women and really short because it was such a tidy space to get into. Um, I'll link both these articles in the um, post for this episode of Behind the Ostium and you can kind of read all about it. Um, as for how it actually looked with the crazy skulls all around and then when Jake actually gets through the really weird giant skull that's human but not human and really creepy, um, that's all just me having fun making up <laughs> weird horror stuff. Um, the title for the episode, Cultum Ostium, is literally just Bone Cult in Latin. <laughs> Because I was like, I was trying to find the right one. And then I just tried that. It's like, okay, there we go. That's good. Um, again, with the the way Jake kind of starts going through the tunnel and feeling confident that he can do this is showing Ostium kind of working with him, helping him and, and guide him and get him through what he needs to get through to find the answers that he needs. Um, and it's also kind of making Monica feel left out and less a part of it. And I think it um, encourages her feelings of needing to do what she needs to do and not feel that they're again, part of a team so much anymore and needed to be on their own kind of personal quests that they're doing. Um, so by Jake having and this happens to Jake, it kind of makes her, makes it easier for her to want to do the things um, that she needs to do. And again, at this point, I didn't really know what they were, but it's 
stuff I could feel was right for the characters that they were leading on these tangents that I kept encouraging along the way um, to keep going. Yeah. What you got for episode two? So one of the interesting things, and that may just be a red herring, um, the, from the episode that I liked was mm-hmm. the, the door numbers randomizing. Yeah. And awesome. um, I probably thought long and hard about that for <laughs> far, far too long. Um, <clears throat> but I did, I did write down um, that this was um, door number 45. Mm-hmm. And after the doors randomized, they're no longer going through them sequentially. Right. But the objects still carry the door number on them. Yeah. So I was like, mm-hmm. all right, so there's, there's still a, a rhyme. A sequence. You just can't see the reason. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but. So part of that, I think, was um, – because I was planning, I think, on going again in a sequential thing, and then it was either feeling a little um, stymieing, like limiting me a bit, or almost like it was going to be too much work again to remember exactly which number it is that had to link up with it. But also the untethered part of it with Ostium literally being, you know, pulled and disconnected from whatever it was before and only having the doors left that helping it the point of that was to show things have gotten messed up and that's why the numbers are all messed up too. And there has no rhyme or reason to them anymore. They still work and will still take you to crazy places, but it, the number system isn't the same anymore to a point. Cause then again, the actual talisman, the artifacts, those are still binding and important and need to be applied to the map table to keep building up the chi of ostium or whatever it is. <laughs> it worked well. Um, it, like I said, it, it did make me think about it a lot, thinking, well, where's this headed? What, 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 what secret thing could possibly happen later on that will we'll start from this? And, and there is, I guess, a, a payoff later mm-hmm. on. Um, I think this is also that you'll see in most of the episodes of this season. Um, I was getting some people asking, wanting some classic classic Ostium place type episodes like Roanoke and the Mary Celeste and places like that. And so I was like, okay, cool. Well, then I'm going to start a new season. So I'm going to have some fun finding some weird places to take them that are, you know, important historical places that have meaning um, that are going to become mysterious and stuff like that. And um, it was just fun kind of researching that and finding the right place where I would go through a kind of big list I had going and pick one and then see if that would work and then start writing it and finding, oh yeah, I've got plenty to talk about in this world kind of within this setting and, and kind of get away with it. 